here we are with the iPad in landscape mode on the little Apple case as a stand which is going to make it a little bit easier for me to manipulate this off to the side here which is very difficult but you see how fluid and fast everything happens which is just really impressive I mean the more I use it the, the, the more impressed I get with uh, how fast things happen with the different uh, programs, different apps, different functions. I can, I'm having a hard time seeing off to the side here, so let's push that and go back to the home page. What I want to do is show several apps that I am really using a lot. It's only been a couple days, but I am uh, pretty much settling on a few that have, are serving good purposes for me. One of the things that I, I looked for was a good Twitter application, and after trying a whole bunch of them, the, the one of the moment right now is Twitterific, which shows all of my uh, friends' str Twitter stream over here, and it also shows, uh, oh wow, got lots of them in here. On the left, you can go over here and see people that have mentions and direct messages, and you can do favorites, etc., etc. But it works pretty well, and if you tap on one, you can... Uh, I like the overall way that pop-ups work on the iPad. I think that's, that's a good... Uh, way that they've done things as you can see how fluid it is when they, they pop up you can retweet and everything but that's true that's Twitterific there's a free version and a paid version I think the difference is there's a line of ads on and the paid version also handles multiple Twitter accounts which is kind of handy now the other thing that I do a lot of is work in Google Reader with my RSS feeds and it's easily done using a mobile safari in the browser but it's not quite as fluid as I like to work so uh, since I spend so much time I follow hundreds and hundreds of RSS feeds thousands of items a day I wanted something that kind of streamlines that for me so I tested a bunch of different things and I've settled right for the moment anyway on Net Newswire because I really like the way it presents things. It opens up. Again, it's a two pane in landscape. And in portrait mode, it's just the one big item pane over here. And this one pops up, similar to the pop up window that you saw on Twitterific. But this, again, is all my feeds. I don't really see where are my feeds. I can go here, latest feeds, and if you select one, you get your full feed preview over here. It's actually the full feed. And what I really like about this is that it'll even play embedded YouTube flash video in this little mini browser that's in here. And that's one reason why I really like Net News War. But this little button up here instantly moves to the next unread item no matter which feed it's from so I can spin through this really fast I can see the entire each item I can stop and look at stuff I can tap on uh, links and it'll pop open in the stay right here this is now in gadget that was a link to in gadget and of course it's fully zoomable very usable and so I'm, I'm really going to go back and then I can go on to the next feed I can do favorites I've now favorited that and one of the nice things about NetNews Wire is that even though it's a self-contained RSS feeder feed reader it syncs with my Google Reader so I can actually uh, everything's going to be synced to Google so when I go back to the desktop or any other computer 
and open up Google Reader, it's all up to date. And I, I really like that. And that's a, that's a, I forget how much that was. That may have been nine ninety nine, I believe that one was. Then of course there's uh, the Kindle app, which will do this in the landscape here, which you may have seen. I can open up a book and it's not quite as good. I normally use this in portrait because I like the long page. It mimics a book page a little bit better. But it uh, it's nice and crisp. It's a very good reading experience. I like I like this app. I like Kindle here. I'm also using of course iBooks. I kind of like in landscape the dual page thing so that you can go back and forth like that. It's uh, it's pretty nice. I, I use iBooks in either landscape here or portrait which is a one big page again. Um, so that's cool. Now here's a really cool one that I just discovered this morning. As good as Mobile Safari is, and I'll show you that in a minute, sometimes it's really nice if I could see two pages side by side. And this little 99 cent program in the App Store called Browser Duo, that's exactly what it does. It opens up two web pages, and you can have bookmarks and favorites, etc. But you see, like, it's JK on the run here. We can go over here, and let me see if I can get to another page. I don't really have anything listed there. See if I can do this from the side. You'll have to bear with me, because I, I really can't see. Uh, but I, what I want to do is get to another page that you can see. You see the keyboard and, and landscape is pretty nice. It's even off to the side here. I'm able to use it pretty comfortably. Let's see if I type that right. Yeah, see, so you've got Google. And again, this works like everything else on the iPad. The pinch and zoom. But it's a nice way to kind of keep an eye on two different sites if you want to do it like having Twitter over here just running there while actually working over here and like I said it's 99 cents and it's pretty cool and you can even go uh, full screen which will let you blow it all the way up if you want or you can go back to dual screen. So that's that's called Browser Duo for 99 cents. Now let's see I just want to show you a couple more. Now here's one that's really cool because it just showed up here yesterday. I'm a big fan of Zinio. I've used it for a long time and the iPad version just showed up yesterday. The, the app is free. Um, it's a mag digital magazines which we've probably read a lot about how digital magazines are going to be big on the iPad and while I don't know about that what I do know is that Zinio is pretty cool and again pinch and zoom and this is where it really shines over other versions of Zinio because it gives you the full zoom ability if you will you can uh, Tap stuff here. Let's see, you can tap at the top and get a page, kind of a table of contents, so you can go back and forth. You can get to the table of contents here with page numbers and go straight to that page. It's not quite as fast as I'd like, but it's fairly decent. I mean, it's pretty nice go back to page mode and see how that gets out of your way. So that's Zinio for iPad. Okay, let's do something a bit unusual. Log me in Ignition. I've 
I've written about this. I don't want you to see my login <laughs> information. Okay, so let's log into my MacBook. Now, the MacBook is right behind me, or right behind you, but it could be across the world, and as long as it's attached to the web, it's going to log me in, and this is my MacBook. If you notice the cursor here, you move it from the side. It takes a little getting used to, but it's, it's actually the best way to interact with it. See how I've been able to do whatever, and I can go here, tap to click. You see how fast that happened. Let me get this uh, box out of the way. There we go. So I can easily open up windows. It's just really, really useful and I'm finding ways when sometimes if I need to do something that the iPad can't handle I can pop over from anywhere across town and log into either my Mac or, or, or one of my Windows my ThinkPad and I can run Windows which the ThinkPad. Let me let me let me make sure the Think the ThinkPad is sleeping. Let me wake it up just a moment. So I'm still on the Mac here. In fact, I can zoom in and let you see how easy that is to interact with. It's pretty it's pretty responsive. Surprisingly so. But let's terminate this session. In session. Everything is touch optimized. That's one thing, one reason why the app, iPad experience has been so good is everything is touch optimized. So I'm logging into Windows. I don't want you to see my my login again, which I, is already there. And I'm now running or accessing a Windows 7 application the same way. In fact, if I move that, I can do the menus I can activate simple point and tap just like Windows everything happens quickly it's just a very decent user experience and it's very usable and it's very useful and that's pretty darn good there's my rocket dock at the top, which that's actually part of log me in. Let's close that little information box. There we go. If I can reach it, I'm on the side again. See my battery, I'm on AC power. Everything works nice and nice and smooth and neat. I can check my uh, battery power from here it's pretty darn quick everything happens just like it does as if I was sitting at the uh, at, at the remote computer and that is one reason why why uh, log me in is so powerful I really like it on the iPhone but with the bigger screen it's even nicer. There's Tweet Deck. It should load up all my tweets. I can uh, minimize that to the taskbar. And then I should be able to. S nice and neat. So we'll cancel this session. In session. And then we can go back to the desktop. Of course, you've got the uh, typical search of the keyboard. Got my email program, which I'm not sure if I want you to see my stuff. The 
with the preview over here and again pinch and zoom very nice user experience so this has been James Kendrick at JK on the run with a hands-on look at apps on the iPad iPad optimized applications are the way to go in fact I can show you how bad uh, a an iPhone only app it'll run and it's usable but it doesn't look very good let me find one here that uh, like this remember the milk Ah, oh, there it goes should have waited let's uh, get this centered a little bit this is in pixel double mode this is normal size it actually looks okay here and it's fully interactive but if you want to make it bigger I mean it's fully usable it just looks blocky and it's ugly and uh, I like most people that I've read don't find it very much fun to use for very long so I'm pretty much sticking with iPad optimized applications which makes a big difference like uh, as you far up this New York Times iPad app this is the editor's choice it's free it's a nice app but it's very restricted I actually prefer using the full New York Times website because all the contents there this is just a handful of uh, it's just a handful of the the various articles in fact I can show you that let's go to the New York Times here if I can find it from the side is it here there's the New York Times right there this is just the regular old Safari website pinch and zoom is so much fun on this but that's James Kinnick with JK on the run dot com a gig on site with iPad apps hands-on video thanks